our happy place. We are back from our short trip to Walt Disney World. We had a great time. We were there for the Food and Wine Festival, which we haven't done in many, 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 many years. We had Saturday, Sunday, Monday to tour the parks, and then we were flying back yesterday, which was a Tuesday. And um, I had originally not gotten park tickets for yesterday because I wasn't sure how tired everybody was going to be. Usually when we're going on longer trips by the third, after three or four full park days, everybody needs a break. So I didn't want to invest in the tickets if everybody wasn't going to be in the mood to go to the parks. Um, after consulting with Lily and Adam, with the dad and the kid, after consulting with the two of them, we decided to spend our last morning there in the Magic Kingdom. So on Monday, we added a park day to our tickets for Adam and Lily. I have an annual pass this year, so I didn't need to do that. So that being said, we didn't have fast passes for yesterday. We didn't have fast passes for Tuesday morning. Um, so at about five o'clock Tuesday morning, I was trying to put together a quick touring plan for the morning at the Magic Kingdom. So. I wanted to give you an idea of how to get the most out of a short day in the Magic Kingdom Park utilizing rope drop and the fast pass system. We got to the park when it opened um, at eight o'clock. So the park opened at nine, but Main Street opens an hour before the park opens at eight o'clock. It's really nice to get there at that time. You can get really, really, really nice photos on Main Street in front of the castle. Um, look around the castle area because you, what you'll find is photo pass photographers stationed throughout the park and within the hub who might have some castle photos that are from different from the normal straight on to the hub, straight on rather, sorry, different from castle photos that are straight on to the castle from different perspectives, um, which are also really, really nice. So when you get there in the morning, what we did was we got there at eight, We you know, we walked around a little bit. We walked in and out of the shops. We found almost every photo pass photographer that we could, and we took castle pictures and Main Street pictures. Another tip for you is at that morning, early in the morning, the park's not that crowded. I don't know if they would do it all the time, but we asked the one of the castle photographers, somebody who's there to take pictures of Cinderella Castle straight on with your family in the foreground, um, if they could do a flip around shot of us and do a shot with Main Street down the background to us. And like I said, there weren't a lot of people in the park, so it was a beautiful, nice, clear shot down to the train station and the tree, which they put up because they have got all the Christmas decorations up. So if you ask for that, that's something that they might be able to do, too. And I think you get the best pictures when the park is crowded. Um, a little before park opening, what will also happen is the Main Street vehicles will come out. So if you've never ridden like the old fashioned fire truck that goes down Main Street, this is another great time to do it. Um, they're out and about first thing in the morning before the park gets too crowded. And then you can grab yourself a cup of coffee and head over to your desired rope drop location. So we went over to Tomorrowland. Um, we're big fans of Space Mountain. We went to the rope at Tomorrowland. They're going to have rope stationed at different parts within the hub. So you can either go to Fantasyland, you can go to Tomorrowland, you can go to Adventureland. Pick the major ride that you want to rope drop. If you're going to Fantasyland for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you really need to be at the front of that pack. So you might want to skip the cup of coffee and the ride on the antique fire engine up and down Main Street. Because if you're really not at the front of that pack, that line for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train will fill up real quick. And you'll find that you're not saving any time by being at the park early. So we opted instead for go to go to Tomorrowland. So we went to ride when the rope drops Space Mountain with a 10 minute wait. We went to ride Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin with a five minute wait. No wait. We did the people mover. Um, and then we were heading, up, heading over to our first fast pass. And I want to get into fast passes when you're making mass, last minute fast passes for things. What I tend to do is make our first fast pass window starting at the time the park opens or a little after the park opens. So in this case, I made a 9.05 fast pass for, from 9.05 to 10.05 for the teacups, knowing we'd be going into Tomorrowland, following the flow of the park because we didn't want to be running back and forth across the park. It's really big. That can take more time than you think. So look at the mark, look at the map when you're making these plans. I'm having word retrieval problems. I guess a little too much Disney vacation, right? Um, look at the map when you're making these plans. So if you're familiar with Magic Kingdom, 
you can exit Tomorrowland and enter Fantasyland, and right there is the teacups, which is one of Lily's favorite rides. So I was able to get, at that morning, a 9.05 to 10.05 Fast Pass for the teacups. And then after that, I was able to get a 10.10 Fast Pass for Winnie the Pooh. Um, so we went to the teacups. We rode the teacups with no wait. We got right off of the teacups a couple minutes after 10, went straight on to Winnie the Pooh with no wait. Um, while we were waiting to board our vehicle on the Winnie the Pooh ride, because we had gone through the Fast Pass entrance, I started doing something that I suggest you do when you come to your third Fast Pass. Once you've scanned your Fast Pass, your third Fast Pass, you can technically search for Fast Pass time starting right at that moment. You don't have to wait for the whole one hour window to elapse. So in this instance, my next Fast Pass was for after 11 o'clock and it was for Dumbo. Um, because I had originally scheduled it with those hour-long in intervals for your first three Fast Passes. But because I had now scanned our Winnie the Pooh Fast Pass, I was able to go and search, modify the existing Fast Pass, and keep searching until I found a time that was more suitable. So I searched and I came up with a 10.30 time. So now, uh, now it's 10.15, we're about to get on Winnie the Pooh, and I got a 10.30 time for Dumbo. Um, I did that three times. Basically, I changed, I did searches three times until I found a time slot that worked for me. I kept pulling it back. So it went from a little after 11 to 11 o'clock on the dot to 1050 to 1040 to 1030. So now the new fast pass window for Dumbo opened at 1030 when my fast pass that I just used was for 1015. So if you see, you can save an hour in your fast pass time by modifying that existing fast pass once you scan the band for your second Fast Pass. We rode um, Winnie the Pooh, which is one of Lily and Adam's favorite rides. We headed over to Dumbo and we proceeded with the process again. While we were waiting to board our flight on Dumbo, we went through the Fast Pass line. We scanned our Fast Pass. We had now all used our third Fast Pass for the day, which meant that we could start adding additional Fast Passes. Um, <clears throat> If you try to do this and it's not giving you any more fast passes, sign out of the app and sign back in because it just might not be registering the last action that you've taken. So I signed back into the My Disney Experience app and I searched for an available fast pass and there was one available for five minutes later, again at the teacups. I chose that one because it's one of Lily's favorite rides. We love the spinning and we were going to walk right past it. When we finished Dumbo, we walked back past the teacups. We got back on through the Fast Pass entrance again. Mind you, the teacups doesn't usually have a huge wait, but even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, if you can walk right onto the ride as opposed to having to wait in that 10 or 15 minute line, it really is a time saver. And then we proceeded with the process again, waiting to board the teacups. I searched for Fast Passes, found something in Fantasyland. I happened to pick it's a Small World. Mickey's Fill Her Magic was also available. There were other rides that there were um, Fast Passes available for at that point, but we wanted It's a Small World to be our last ride since we were only going to be there for the morning. Um, so I made that Fast Pass. We rode the teacups. We went to ride Cinderella's Carousel because Lily wanted to ride Cinderella's Carousel. She wanted to play a little a round of uh, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. We had had those cards from the previous day that we were in the park. So we played Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom in Fantasyland because that had been our next location in the game. And then we went to ride It's a Small World. Um, we got online. We scanned our Fast Passes. Now, just out of curiosity, I started searching again, even though I knew we were going to have to leave the park soon because we had a flight we had to catch. But I would have been able to get Fast Passes, let's say, for within the next half an hour for um, the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, within the next hour for the Haunted Mansion. So there were definitely other options available. Had we been in the park the whole day, I could have just kept doing that all day long. There's no guarantee that you're going to get bigger rides when you do that. Um, but if you're just looking to spend a great last minute day in the park, chances are the big attractions like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you're not going to get a fast pass for after the 60 day window unless you're persistently looking every day. So if you just want to enjoy whatever a little bit of time you have, stacking the fast passes this way and utilizing the fast pass plus system with moving the time schedules closer together and adding those additional fast passes as soon as you swipe the other one will really get you a lot of bang for your buck as far as covering park. Um, so after we rode the It's a Small World, we went and watched Great Muppets in History. 
um, great, mu no, great moments in history. I'm sorry, with the Muppets, but just the American ones. Um, you got to see the show to get what that means. And we grabbed ourselves a croissant, a croissant ice cream sandwich at the little quick service there. I think it's called Sleepy Hollow. And we headed on our way out of the park. It was noon. So we had done all of those things between nine o'clock and noon. From the time the rope dropped in Tomorrowland, we did Space Mountain. We did Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Uh, the People Mover in Tomorrowland. We did the Teacups twice. We did Winnie the Pooh. We did Dumbo. We did It's a Small World. <laughs> Cinderella's Royal Carousel, which was probably the longest wait we had because there was no fast pass for that. We played a game of Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And we watched great moments in history with the Muppets while enjoying our croissant ice cream sandwich. That was in a three hour window in the Magic Kingdom. I think a lot of the times people don't realize that you can move those fast passes, that once you've clocked the use of a fast pass, the window is expired. You do not have to wait another hour anymore. Once you swipe it, you're good to go to book another one. So you can keep using that over and over and over again. We also did that one night that we were in. We had gone to Epcot during the day and we used all our fast passes. And that night we went to the Magic Kingdom and I kept adding fast passes as we were going. This is really great too if you have small kids who don't like waiting in line and they just want to be on something. You just pick what's close by that's available, get on it, swipe your magic band, do it again. The other thing is if you're waiting in line for something and you have a fast pass available or you're able to modify a fast pass window, you might want to check to see if there's a fast pass there at that time because we were walking onto rides with fast passes that people were standing in line for. Um, you know, it's a small world it was a 40 minute wait at that point, approaching noon, it starts to get pretty crowded in fantasy land. So if you're standing in line, you have a fast pass available, check to see if there are any fast passes for the ride that you're standing in line for. You'll find that you're going to be able to get a lot out of a touring day, particularly in the Magic Kingdom, because there are so many rides there. If you really work the fast pass system, we had a great time. We definitely did. Um, we vlogged again, so we'll be sharing the vlogs of this trip once we finish the summer vlogs. If this is your first time here with us, I hope you found that tip help. These tips helpful. Um, if you have tips on how to maximize a morning at Magic Kingdom or any of the other parks, please share it in the comments down below. I'm always looking for ways to save time making our vacations a little more efficient and being able to share them with everybody else. Um, if you saw some of our pictures on Twitter and Facebook, there'll be vlogs coming following our summer vlogs from this trip. And we look forward to sharing those from food and wine and some of the Christmas decorations that are up in the Magic Kingdom. And as always, guys, I want to say thank you for coming to our happy place. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.